All right, assignment 6-5. So we're starting our understanding of how calculus can help us find volumes. And the first way that we're talking in assignment 6-5 is knowing, uh, using known cross-sections. So for these, we're going to set things up. And if you can see the structure, man, that's going to be so helpful in terms of understanding how to find volume with calculus. And you need to know your basic geometry formulas. So from problems three to six, sketch the graphs of the regions before setting it up. So the sketch is already there, so I'm not gonna make you sketch it again. But can you set it up using these cross sections to find the volume? So the key here is understand what the formula is with one variable using the base. So for the first one, if this forms the base of a square, what's the formula for a square? So first of all, I recognize that the area of a square using its base would be b squared. I also recognize I'm integrating, and it's y equals x squared, but I'm integrating from 0 to 1, if it's what's shown. So it's an integration question, and I'm integrating from 0 to 1. So let's start there. So I'm just going to break it down simple, I hope. So it's an integration problem. I'm integrating from 0 to 1. The formula for the square is b squared. So I use that formula, but I need to know what b equals. And for the most part, b is going to equal whatever the function is. So if you want to know the area, it's the formula. And the base, it's the function that represents the base or the y-coordinate represents the base, if you like. So f of x represents the y-coordinate. So the function represents the base. So whatever the height is or the y-value, that's what the base is. So what is our function in this case? It's x squared, and then you have it. So that's it. That's the answer. For part B, it says to use what a semicircle make sure yep yeah. so what's the formula for a semicircle understanding the base is the diameter so a full circle would be pi r squared that would be the full one pi r squared so first of all we don't want pi r squared we want one half because it's a semicircle and then we have to understand we want half the base, so I'm going to show you. We need to understand the radius is half the base. That the base is the diameter all the way across. So if I want the radius, I want half the diameter or half the base. And again, the base represents the function. So if I'm going to set this up, again, I'm going from 0 to 1, and then I write down the formula that I'm going to use. So this is the formula we use. So it's usually pi r squared, but I want half of it. Now, we can put the 1 half in front. I kind of like practicing doing that. And we can also put the pi in front. So 1 half pi is really pi over 2, and that's great practice to put it in front of the integration. And then inside the integration is going to be one half what the base is. The base is the function, and our function is x squared. And there's our setup. Done. The more you practice, right, it'll get more comfortable. Part C. What's the shape? That's a rectangle, isn't it? I already know. So the rectangle is base times height. So I start with the formula. I understand the base is the function. The height is what? The, it has a height of 2. So if I put it together, I'm integrating from 0 to 1. And the formula is base times height. Well, my base is the function f at x. 
and the height is 2, and it's over. Base times height, over. And that would help you find the volume with rectangular cross-sections. I think if you allow yourself for it to be relatively simple and follow the formulas that you'll be successful, and the more you practice, the deeper knowledge you're going to get about it. Uh, number two. So again, the base region here, so I have an equation, negative x squared plus x. I'm just going to write it down. That's what the base is, negative x squared plus x. And if I see what's bounded here, again, it goes from 0 to 1. So I know for all of these questions, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1, and then I need to understand what each shape is. So the formula, again, for a square is to take the base and square it. So in part A, I need a square. So I need to know the formula for the square is b squared. And that b is this, the function. So we have negative x squared plus x squared dx, and it's over. So the formula for a square is the base squared. I understand the base, the length of the base, is equal to the function. I substitute in, and it's over. The next one is equilateral triangles. The formula for that is root 3 over 4 times the base. I think that's the tricky one, right, that you usually don't use? I think it's that. And we're using the same base. And it's root 3 over 4 times the base. So the integral setup is 0 to 1. It's root 3 over 4 times the base, which is negative x squared plus x dx, and it's over. So know your formula. Know what the base represents, and then just plug and be. let it be simple. Part C, is that a semicircle again? Nope. So part C is rectangles whose heights are half the bases. So the base is x squared plus x. The height is half the base. So we know the base is negative x squared plus x. The height is half the base. So it's 1 half negative x squared plus x. So this is what I need to know. I know that area is base times height. So these are what I'm going to use with my integration. So I'm going to integrate. I'll do it over here. I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1 base times height. So that's negative x squared plus x times 1 half negative x squared plus x dx. Done. Yes, you could simplify it. I don't care. That's perfect the way it looks. So you could write this as negative x squared plus x squared because it repeats. This you actually understand base times height and the complete setup. That's part C. All right, number three. In number three, the base region is a circle. And it's x squared plus y squared equals four. And we're going to do squares perpendicular to the y-axis and then semicircles perpendicular to the y-axis. Again, so what is that going to look like? Well, step one is I'm actually going to draw. I don't have a sketch, so I want a sketch. So x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a circle. The center of the circle is 0, 0. The square root of 4 is the radius. So I'm going to draw that. And then I'll show you. So there's the, the base, the foundation of it. And so if you take one cross section, that's what it would look like. Now, understand that I have to take half of it and then double it. 
So I can't, if it's x squared plus y squared equals 4, I have to solve for y. Like I have to go 4 subtract x squared and then square root it. Now I know it's positive and negative. Like positive is the top half. Negative in front is the bottom half. But this here, I'm just going to look at the top half and then double it. So I'm not going to worry about the bottom half, just the top half. And then I'm going to double the answer because it's symmetric. Okay, so now I have a better understanding of what I'm doing. So I know I'm going to double the answer. I know I'm integrating from negative 2 all the way to positive 2. So the graph helps me with that. And again, I'm only doing the top half from negative 2 to positive 2. So this base is top subtract bottom or just the function. So in this case, this square root of 4 minus x squared represents the base that I'm going to use. So now when it says use a, uh, what did it tell us? I forgot. First one is a square perpendicular to the y-axis. Oops. I went the wrong way. So this is perpendicular to the x. If we want to go perpendicular to the y, I'm going to have to go the other direction. So I'm going to scratch this out. This is the direction if it's perpendicular with the y. And if it's perpendicular with the y, I have to use y's in my answer. So I shouldn't have solved for x or for y. I should have solved for x. Now it's the same answer x is equal to the square root of 4 minus y squared. Same answer that way. But if it's perpendicular with the y-axis, everything is in terms of y. So this becomes my base perpendicular to the y-axis. Then, if I'm going to double the answer, this is what it looks like. So this is half the base. I want to double it. So it's the full length across. So let's just start again. I'm going to integrate still from negative 2 below to positive 2 above. And I want to double. So whatever this length is, I'm going to double it to get the full base. So I need to double this. And that then will represent all the way across. So I'm integrating from negative 2 to positive 2. And the full base is 2 and the square root of 4 minus y squared. That represents the full base. The area of a square is you take the base and you square it. So that part, the full base, you have to double it, which is that is, square it. And it's dy, and you have your answer. That's part A. Part B says do the same thing with semicircles. So let's see if we can make that make sense. So let's redefine this. The base is 2 times the square root of 4 minus y squared. So that's going all the way across. I want to do semicircles. So the base represents the diameter. But for the area of a circle, I know the area is 1 half pi r squared. That's a semicircle. The radius is 1 half of this. So if I'm going to have the radius that's 1 half, I no longer need to double the answer because half of it is the radius. So if I go all the way across, it's the full base. So I doubled it. But for the radius, I just need half of it, which is just what this is without the 2. So if I put that together, I'm integrating from negative 2 to positive 2. The formula for half circle is pi over 2. I'm going to put that in front. And then my half my base is the square root of 4 minus y squared dy. And that represents the semicircle. Man, that's good math, isn't it? Are you going to be okay? Let's keep fighting. Let's not give up. All right, number 
number four. So in number four, the base region is bounded by y equals 2 subtract x and y equals x squared. And we're doing perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay. Step one is I have to graph it and see the limits or the bounds. So I'm actually going to make them equal to each other to find where the bounds are. So I'm going to add x, subtract 2. I'm going to factor this and then solve it. So my bounds go from negative 2 to positive 1. That also gives me two points for my graph. So if I go negative 2 squared, or if I go 1 squared, not only do I have my bounds, I have points for my graph. So let's plot them. 1, 1, and negative 2, and 4. So 1, 1, and negative 2, 4. That makes my line. There it is. And that's also going to make my parabola. Now, I know x squared, the vertex is at 0, 0. So then I can curve up and draw my sketch. And you can see the line. This is the line y equals 2 subtract x. And this is y equals um, x squared. And then if you shade in, that's the base for your volume. So if I was finding the area, you go top, subtract bottom to find the area. And that's exactly how I'm going to find the base for the volume. So if I ask you what is top, subtract bottom, you go 2 subtract x is the top, subtract the bottom, which is x squared. And this represents the base. So when we talk about like what's the formula, what are we using, now we know what our base is. So first we want squares perpendicular to the x-axis, so they're x's. So the formula for a square is just b squared. So we're going to integrate from negative 2 to positive 1. And I'm going to integrate, and this is my base. So it's 2 subtract x subtract x squared squared dx. Part B says use uh, right triangles perpendicular to the x again. The base of the triangle sits in the region and the height is three times the base. So let's just remind yourself the base is 2 subtract x subtract x squared. It just said the height of the triangle and I just forgot right away. 3 times the base. So it's 3 times whatever the base is. And then the formula for a right triangle is half the base times the height. So here to the left, I'm going to put it all together. So we're going to integrate. And again, it goes from negative 2 to 1. And we're going to use this formula, 1 half the base times the height. So it's good practice to put the 1 half in front. The base is 2 subtract x subtract x squared times uh, the height, which is 3 times that. If you wanted to, you might see the answer like this. So at least it's good practice to see what it would look like. Is that 3 would be in front. So 3 times a half would be 3 over 2. And then you would see 2 subtract x subtract x squared squared dx because they're multiplying. And that, that's a cleaner way to write the answer. 3 over 2. Two minus x minus x and so on. So that's a different. They mean the same thing. So both would give you full credit. But on multiple choice, you might see the setup looking like that. All right, number five.
How are we doing so far? We're fighting, right? We're trying to figure it out. Man, having good graphing skills and algebra skills are so important. Find the volume of a solid whose base is y equals the square root of x. Bounded by 0 and 4, cross sections are perpendicular to the x axis. That means I can leave this in terms of x, and let's go. So step one is to graph it. I need to graph it all the way to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. The square root of 4 is 2, and so I'm going to just graph it from there. So this is a sketch of what it would look like. That's where it would stop. Here's the region. And what does it say? How are we going to find the volume? They're squares, perpendicular. Okay, so the area of a square, again, is b squared. Base is the function, the square root of x. And then I'm integrating from 0 to 4. And I'm using the area formula where the base is root x. And it's done. Did it say to completely find it? I think it did. So did it say to actually find the volume? Find the volume, silly. Here we are. So now I actually have to find the volume. That's no big deal. So the square root and square undo each other. So it's just x. The antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2. And it's from 0 to 4. Plug in 4. Subtract, plug in zero, and you have your answer. So another answer to this would be eight, because it's 16 divided by two. Done. All right, part C, B. <laughs> Not even a B, silly me. Six, I'm rhyming now, that's where I'm at in life. Find the volume of a solid whose base is bounded by Y equals 2x, uh, y equals 0, x equals 3, and whose cross sections are semicircles. Okay. So we have y equals 2x, y equals 0, x equals 3. So I'm going to graph this. So 2x is a line. I need to go all the way to 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. So there it is. That's the only part I need to know. I said this right here is 3, 6. And it's bounded. Y equals 0 is the x-axis. X equals 3 is this one right here, a vertical line right there. And so you can see the part shaded in. That's your foundation there. And we're going to build a volume off of that. This work, you know, if you ever see and come back to my classroom, I'm doing the same. But if you see my classroom on the wall, there are um, projects. All these projects are with this lesson, known cross sections, doing exactly this and actually physically seeing it. All right. So for a semicircle, the formula is one half pi r squared. The radius is half the diameter and our diameter is the base so our base is the function which is 2x so the di the radius is one half the base so if i go one half the base this just simplifies to x so now I'm going to integrate. So where am I integrating from? 0 to 3. The formula for a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. So pi over 2 will stay in front. I'm going to take the radius and I'm going to square it. And we just said the radius is equal to x. So it's just x squared dx. So our radius is x. So it's just r squared, x squared. 
we can leave pi over 2 out of it. Just put it in front and then integrate and then it can be tacked on in front at the end. So the integration of x squared is x cubed divided by 3. And again, we're going from 0 to 3. So we have pi over 2 in front. Plug in 3, and that's 3 cubed divided by 3. Subtract 0 cubed divided by 3. If I simplified it, it would be 27 divided by 3, which is 9. So all of this together would be 9 pi over 2. When you subtract 0, it doesn't do anything to it. Number seven. All right, in number seven, for problem seven and eight, sketch the regions and find the area. So this is from the last lesson, not finding volume. So in number seven, can you graph 2x squared plus 3x, and can you graph g at x equals 2? So if I want to find the area and sketch this, step one actually is to make them equal to each other and do the algebra to find the limits. So I'm going to subtract 2, and then I'm going to factor this. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 and positive 3. The two numbers that fit here are 4 and negative 1. So I'm going to write this as 2x squared, 4x, subtract 1x, subtract 2. And then I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to factor out a 2x. I'm going to factor out a negative 1. And then I have one factor, 2x subtract 1, and another factor, x plus 2. Solve each one. This answer is 1 half, this answer is negative 2, and these are my bounds. Okay, so if I graph this, one half and negative 2 are really important. Now, I didn't mean one half there necessarily. So. 1 half and negative 2 are essential in terms of what my bounds are. So can I graph 2x squared plus 3x? Well, if I factor out an x, I get 2x plus 3. So I have a 0 at 0 and another one at negative 3 over 2 or negative 1.5. That's a good start. So 0 and negative 1.5. In the middle there is the vertex. And I also know that the y coordinate for those x values must be 2 because it intersects that line, which is 2. So at 1 half, the answer is 2. And the other one was negative 2. The answer was 2. So I know those. Ignore this little scratchy here. Somewhere down here is the vertex, but it actually won't uh, factor in much. But there's a sketch. Shade it in. And then how do I find the area of that? Well, I'm integrating. I just found the bounds from negative 2 to 1 half. There you go. What's the top compared to the bottom? So the top is just 2 subtract, use parentheses. The bottom is the parabola 2x squared plus 3x. So there's the setup to find the area. Does it say to actually find the area? Let's see what it says. So for number seven, it does say to find the area. So I have to integrate that. Is there someone behind me? Yeah. So 
I need to actually integrate this to actually find the area. That's Juliana. So it's not bad, and I'm not going to simplify it. So the antiderivative of 2 is 2x. The antiderivative of 2x squared is 2x cubed divided by 3. And that negative also belongs to the 3x. So subtract again and add 1 to the exponent and divide. And I'm integrating from negative 2 to 1 half. And then I just put it together and don't simplify. So substitute the top bound in. Put parentheses around all of it. Subtract. Now the second, the lower bound, plug in. It's negative 2. And you have your answer. So just be patient. Plug in the upper bound. Subtract. Plug in the lower bound of negative 2 and just be happy that it's done. You don't have to simplify that. Number 8. In number 8, we have f at y equals y squared subtract 2y and g at y equaling 2 subtract y. And I want to find the areas using those. A little bit different because it's in terms of y. It's been inversed. So let's just make sure we can think through this together. Remember what step one is? Step one is to make them equal to each other, to find those limits. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a quadratic. I'm going to make it equal to 0. So I'm going to add y. I'm going to subtract 2. Simple factoring, thankfully, and then solve it. So one solution is 2, and the other solution is negative 1. If I want to find the x value, you can take either equation. g at y means x. f at y means x. So if I want to find it, I'm going to take the line to subtract y. I can plug in and find the answer to it. So one point, x is 0 and y is 2. For the second one, plug in negative 1, and then x is 3, and y is negative 1. So I take the y value and plug it in and find the x-coordinate that goes with it. Take the y value, plug it in, and find the x-coordinate that goes with it. So these are the essential points on the graph. So I'm going to put them on my graph. So I'm going to put 0, 2, and 3, negative 1. Now those two make a line to begin with. That's the line uh, x equals 2 subtract y. So that's what that is. Now what is it called? That one's called g at y. Or you can just call it g at y. But that's what it means. The other one's a sideways parabola. So what was the other one again? It was f at y equals y squared minus 2y. So if I factor this, I get 0 and positive 2. So I already got positive 2 on the y-axis. If I plug in for the y, it would also be 0. Those are the y-intercepts. So positive 2, and there is the y. So in between them, here somewhere, is the vertex. It's in the middle between the y-intercepts, and it folds like this. It folds sideways to the points. I'm going to shade it in. And then my goal is to find the, it's not going to focus. So then my goal is to find the area of the shaded part. So my bounds is what I found to begin with. Remember these two numbers to begin with? This are, these are my bounds. Negative 1 to 2. 
and I'm going to write it in terms of y. So when it's sideways, it's right subtract left. So on the right is 2 subtract y, and on the right is y squared minus 2y. So the right subtract the left. I think you're finding the area still, right? Yep. So then how do I find the area of this? I need to combine like terms, to be honest. So we have 2 minus y squared, and then negative y subtract a negative. That's adding. So it's negative y plus 2y. That's why it's positive. Then do the antiderivative. That's 2y, y cubed divided by 3. That's y squared divided by 2. And I'm integrating from negative 1 to 2. And then the last step is to do uh, substitution. I'll just do that on the next page. So here's your final answer for number 8. So first you substitute in positive 2. Put parentheses around it, subtract, and then you do the same thing and you plug in negative 1. And it's over. So just be careful, especially for negative numbers, you need to put parentheses around it. Positive numbers, you don't. But negative numbers, you do. And that's it. As long as it's numerically equivalent, you don't have to simplify it. All right. This is what I'm going to do. So that's video number one. And then we'll do another video where I go question nine all the way to the end, hopefully. So that is the first part of your assignment up to question number eight. You had to really fight today to try to understand it and hopefully not just copy, but to try to have a deeper understanding of calculus here. So I'm proud of you for fighting, not giving up, doing your work. And then we'll do part two together. Mr. G Math, over and out.